Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a Denny's Diner slash fast food restaurant. Yeah, I really didn't know exactly how to classify this place. Thank you to all of my lovely subscribers that suggested that I make a Denny's. I had loads of you guys suggesting it. Hopefully you can see some of yourselves on the screen right now. Thank you so much for leaving this suggestion and carrying on the City Builds tutorial playlist. I love making these builds and I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody that does support this series and does leave suggestions. I really need them, so feel free to leave one. Thank you so much, everybody. But without any further ado, why don't I show you how to make your very own Denny's? Let's do this. So just before we start building, ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know that these are all of the materials that we are going to be using for the outside of our Denny's. Please make sure that you have access to all of those and enough of them as well. However, later on, we are going to be moving to the inside of our Denny's, which requires a whole load of other different materials, which we can't carry with us now. I'll let you know what those are when we do actually get to that point. But for now, just grab those. The amount of ground space your Denny's is going to take up is about a 24 by 26 block area. Please do make sure that you have enough room to make it, maybe even make this grid in your world if you want. I'd always suggest doing that if you're planning out a city. And that's it! Make sure that you have all those materials, make sure you've got enough room to make it, make sure that you're ready for a delicious diner style breakfast. And once you are, we can begin. Okay, so step one, food friends, come all the way to the front left-hand corner of your grid. From this corner, I want you to count backwards by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then right by one. You see, if you've made the grid, we're both starting in the same place, so there's no surprises. On top of this block, place a red concrete and two to the right. Place five terracotta going right. One, two, three, four, five. Place three terracotta in front. One, two, three. Place three birch planks on top. One, two, three. Place seven birch planks going right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Place two going down. One, Two, place terracotta underneath, three going backwards, one, two, three, place four terracotta going right, one, two, three, four, three red concretes going right, one, two, three, two red concretes going back, one, two, then ten terracotta going back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three red concrete going backwards as well. One, two, three. Have two red concretes going inwards. One, two. Sixteen terracottas going right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Three more red concrete going right. One, two, three. Come towards the front and place two red concrete. One, two. Ten terracotta. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then two red concrete. The end result will be this shape. Perfect. Kind of looks like an astronaut's helmet or a light bulb. One of the two. Now that you have done this, I also want to add a little bit of structure to the top of our Denny's. So, coming to the top left hand corner of the entrance area where we have all of this birch, I want you to place a dark oak wood stair on top of the front left hand corner block, go right of it by one, I want you to place a red concrete behind, up on top of it, I want you to place six red concretes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go right of it by five. One, two, three, four, five. I want you to go backwards by four. One, two, three, four. 
extend across and connect all the way back up to the top front corner, extend all of the red concretes backwards so that they are equal in length to the other red concretes, which basically means extend down all of those red concretes that you placed all the way up at the top, and in doing that you will also make the front and the sides and pretty much everything involved with the sign. This is where the sign for our Denny's is going to be. This is what, other than the shape of the actual restaurant, this is what is going to separate it from the other buildings. We have quite a large, colourful sign, and we will actually write out Denny's inside of the sign as well later on. Feel free to fill the top of this in using glass or red concrete or yellow or fill it in with whatever really. The end result will be this. I want you to grab your yellow concrete. Come all the way up to the top left hand corner of the front of the sign. Come down by one and two. Place two yellow concretes coming down. Extend the yellow concretes across the front of the sign. Take the two middle blocks at the top and the bottom and extend them down. That kind of reminds me of the Chevrolet, uh, the Chevrolet badge actually, you know, like the car? You guys know what I'm talking about. So that is what we want to have for the front of our Denny's so far. We will alter that later. So what we also want to do is we kind of want to build up a little bit the roofing area around the side of our Denny's. So what we're going to do is behind this set of stairs that we have here, I want you to place a birch plank and then place one coming up and behind, another one, and then that's it. You then want to go back, and then place like a birch plank coming down and back, and then maybe just another one as well. So that's the sort of shape that we're looking for. You want to have the exact same thing on the opposite side as well. So you'll want to have one, two, three, go right, and then start coming down like that. So you kind of just want to tentatively make that shape with your birch planks. That will become more important later on. We are going to make the entrance area as well. So when it comes to the entrance of your Denny's, it is situated right here in this big empty rectangular space. Grab your glass and sat one block inwards from the actual outside entrance you want to one row inwards place a glass block on both sides raise the glass up by one place black concrete on top connect it together at the top place black concrete left and right of the glass and later on we will be able to slot a double door there I also want you to build up the walls left and right of the entrance. This is easily done by adding birchwood planks coming up from the terracottas to meet the birchwood just up above. The same has to be done on the opposite side as well. Birchwood planks being placed up from those terracottas will now give us a nice boxed in entrance. We have to add windows on the front as well. There are two windows. One of them is normal, and it is placed on the center two blocks of the row of four terracotta that you have on the left and right side. Place a two by two square of glass, either glass pane or glass block, on top of the center of the terracottas. So, on top of the two middle blocks, two by two. There is another window. However, these are a little bit different. You want to grab your red concrete and take the edges of the arrowhead-like corners of Denny's. And you want to place three red concretes on top the left and right sides. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you want to join them in the middle. So, one, one, one. And then place glass in the middle of this. The same has to be done on the opposite side, so we'll simply take this side, this side, and we'll place one, two, three, one, two, three, join them in the middle. 
and then glass in the center of that. And of course, as I mentioned, you can use glass pane if you so choose. What we now want to do is we want to place birchwood planks on top of those red sections. The birchwood planks, once placed on top of the red concrete, you want to extend the birchwood plank right towards the center of Denny's, up by one, and then join it right, like this. And then you want to fill the surrounding window in using birch planks, like this. And you want to do the same thing on the opposite side. So birch planks on top of the red concrete area, extend the birch one row inwards towards the middle, up, and then across. And that will give us that. And that is perfect. That's exactly what we want to have so far. The next thing that we're going to do is work on the actual left and right sides. These are quite easy. So, what are we going to do on here? We need to add a load of windows. So, starting from the front, going back, on top of the terracotta, you want to follow this pattern. Birchwood plank, two glass. Birchwood plank, two glass. Birchwood plank, two glass. Birchwood plank. Make that row double. So, on top of all of the birchwood planks, add birchwood blanks, and on top of the glass, place glass. Place three rows of birchwood planks on top of this. It's actually two. I miscalculated. You want to have two rows of birchwood planks on top of this to make it even with the front of the building. Additionally, what we did with the front corners of the front of the building, we want to do with the back corners at the back of the building. Meaning we want to take the two corner, the left and right sides of what I'll call the arrowhead for obvious reasons. You want to extend it up by three using red concrete. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then you want to join them together in the middle at the top. And then place glass in between like this. And then place birchwood planks on top of this. Like so. We are then going to take that birchwood plank that we extended across the back here. We're going to extend it right one and then up one as well. You'll notice that it is the same on the front of the building. We're now going to do the same on the opposite side of the build in terms of the windows and birch and red concrete and all of that. So on top of this terracotta here, we're going to place a birch plank, two glass, birch plank, two glass, birch plank, two glass, birch plank. Double up on the row, which simply means add the exact same row on top, and then add two rows, I got it right this time, two rows of birchwood planks. So that makes it nice and even and smooth with the front of the building. We want to do the same thing that we have done everywhere else with this red area, which means one, two, three red concretes, one, two, three red concretes, join them together at the top, and place glass in between, like this. Place birchwood planks on top of the red concrete and extend the birchwood plank inwards towards the center, up by one, and then extend across and join. Fill in the remaining area using birchwood planks like this. So all in all, you will end up with something that should look exactly like that. And now that you have done that, you will have most of the building complete. I would like to take care of the roof before anything else. It's very important to me, I don't know why. So, when it comes to the roof, it's actually really, really simple. We have a little mini roof just above the entrance. We're going to place dark oak wood slabs across the top of the front of the entrance. We're going to extend the slabs out left and right. And then all of the other above areas, we want to have dark oak wood stairs. This will come up as high as the birch wood planks that we placed earlier. That's why we placed them. So we'll place birch, uh, dark oak wood stairs coming up as high as the 
birch wood plank and then we'll have the stairs come back down again so they'll come back down and probably sit about here i would say maybe even a little bit higher and then underneath these we are going to place upside down birch wood stairs because it or <laughs> dark oak wood stairs i should say because it looks a little bit nicer and you can do that wherever possible like that and that might even involve placing a little bit more birch wood planks as well so you get kind of like a smooth finish we're going to have the same thing on the opposite side, so of course we want to have the dark oak wood stairs running up and back and down like this, and then we extend across like so, and then we place upside down dark oak wood stairs underneath like this, here, and here. And we would also want to place birchwood planks underneath that part too. And it just keeps the area looking quite nice and clean. We are going to connect the birch wood on the front of the build to the back of the build where possible. So that means connecting the top part together like this. This is one of the few restaurants where I have actually chosen to keep uh, kind of like keep the roof just nice and simple seal it up in certain places you may find that you have to uh, delete a couple of stairs or something like that but that's perfectly fine we are simply going to fill the top of this Denny's Inn using birch wood planks so you don't really have to think about it too much at all you simply connect the front and the back of this together whether it's the middle high bit or whether it's the side lower parts, it doesn't really matter. It all follows the exact same sort of uh, the exact same sort of pattern in that you just connect it front to back. It doesn't really matter that much because there's an interior ceiling anyway, and all that means is that we're going to be placing a row of a white concrete actually inside the top of the building, and you're not even going to see the birchwood planks that we're placing. But if you don't have the birchwood planks, then if you have a look at the top of your Denny's, it would look kind of weird. So that is what we want to have so far. We've connected it all together. We're now going to use dark oak wood slabs to uh, add a trim to the roof. And all that means is that we want to take both halves of Denny's, the upper part and the lower half, and we want to place dark oak wood slabs going all the way around the top of our birch wood plank parts. And that's it. So dark oak wood slabs around the top of our birch wood plank parts like this. So you see, it immediately adds a nice effect. We want the same thing just below, so just around the top of this section. And I don't know whether I prefer this, but I'm, I'm going to add an additional dark oak wood slab just coming inwards so that it kind of sit. Oh no. So that it kind of just sits a little bit into the other part, like the higher part. I'm doing so bad with these slabs, so like. I just kind of like, I don't know whether I like it coming inwards a little bit like that, or whether I prefer something, say, like this. It's such a small detail <laughs> that it shouldn't even really be thought about, but I'm thinking about it, so, you know, do which one you would prefer. And we're just going to extend this across, and you can see what a huge difference that makes. Doesn't that look so much better? I certainly think it does. But now that we've done that, we're going to add just a couple more details to Denny's and to the outside of Denny's also. So we're going to use string, red carpet, white concrete, grey concrete, oak leaves, poppies, and then we're going to need crafting tables, yellow banners and red dye, but we'll also kind of need the smooth stone too. Above every single window, that doesn't include these corner windows with the red concrete, I want you to place string with red carpet above the windows. The string is placed directly in front of the glass and the carpet is of course just placed on top of the string. It gives you a cool effect with the windows. 
A lot of restaurants, a lot of places, a lot of buildings in general have canopies above the windows. That's what these are. Canopies are basically just overhangs made out of usually something like cloth or felt or, you know, something to that effect. They're usually made out of some sort of soft material where the rain kind of like bounces off. And that's what that's for. I'm going to get rid of the string and red carpet because we shouldn't need it really again probably. And we're going to grab smooth stone and for later some oak wood planks. I'm going to make a couple, and by the way, depending on where you're making your dennies, you may or may not want to do this. It's completely up to you. So whether or not you want to customize the outside a little bit, I always think it's nice to have something like this out in front of like restaurants and stuff like that. So I'm going to dig out the areas left and right of dennies. So the grass patches left and right of dennies. I'm digging them out and replacing them with smooth stone. So these are just the two patches of grass out in front of Denny's on the left and the right, like this. And we're going to place smooth stone in there. Perfect. I want to have another row of smooth stone that sits directly in front of all of this. So the smooth stone is going to sit directly in front of all of Denny's. I'm going to dig out the area in front of the doors and replace it with smooth stone. And the area in between the doors as well, I'm going to dig it out and replace it with oak planks. Alternatively, you can use whatever flooring material you want to use in Denny's, use that instead of the oak planks. But again, I'm using oak planks, so that's why I'm using oak planks. What we are going to do is dig out the four middle rows between the two black concrete areas and I'm going to dig forwards towards the outline of the build, the grid, and I'm going to replace these rows using some stone or some smooth stone, I should say. I was going to call it uh, stone slabs. Like this. I want to place left and right of this I actually want to have some poppies or some flowers left and right of this walkway. I have some concrete in my way at the moment. So I'm just going to have to quickly grab some grass. And I'm just going to destroy, destroy and place some flowers. Because I really like that next to the paths. I'm going to completely rip out all of the remaining grass left and right of the pathways that we have created. All of this is going to be car parking spaces on both the left and right side. I almost always put these in because, number one, it kind of makes the area look a little bit better. I quite like having a little something inside or in front of the building, I should say. I, I think it makes it look a little bit cleaner. But uh, also, you could put some cars here, which would be quite cool. Next to the poppies, I'm going to place a row of white concrete with three rows of grey concrete next to it with then another row of white concrete and I'm going to repeat the pattern over and over again until we eventually reach the outline of the grid. So that's quite a simple pattern to remember. White concrete, three rows of grey and then white, three rows of grey and then white, like that. I'm then going to get rid of the grass for a second because I noticed that the left and right side of our restaurant has a load of white concrete there. I'd prefer that to be smooth stone because it follows on from what we have on the side of our restaurant. So you can see now we can just kind of like walk up on the side of it. So just like this. Perfect. Before we do the final part of the outside, which is going to be the sign by the way, I always leave that until last, we are going to do some pre-preparations for the inside of the build. So I'm just going to dump these materials into my inventory at the moment. And we're going to add things inside the build like the ceiling and the lights and stuff, because there's a lot of crossover between these. We're going to use white concrete, redstone lamps, block of redstone. We'll need a lot of oak planks, a little bit of glass, that's glass pane. 
we'll need some dark oak wood stairs and some red concrete. And I don't know if there's any more crossover, but I'll point it out if, uh, if we get to it. Oh, there is also quite a lot of red carpet as well. Okay, so grab these materials and head inside. So inside the building, the first thing that we're going to do is rip up the floor. The floor is currently made out of grass. That's a no-go. I don't know how many restaurants that you guys have been to. Maybe if it's a vegan restaurant, or maybe if it's like a vegetarian restaurant, maybe there's grass on the floor. But not in, not in most places. So we're going to rip up all of this and replace it with oak planks. You can use any material that you like for the actual floor. I'm not really telling you exactly which to use. Just kind of use the ones that you want to use, pretty much. That's all you've got to do. I am also realizing at this point we are going to need some glass block as well, but we can, we can sort that out in a moment. But here's some suggestions. If you want to keep the area bright, use something bright. Oak wood is actually quite bright, hence why I'm using it. But you could alternatively use wine. In a lot of places, I like iron block. I also like quartz. I also like white concrete. I wouldn't use really, really dark materials. You can, but you're going to have to make sure that everywhere else is well lit up. Feel free to also use smooth stone. Smooth stone isn't a horrible material because it also kind of follows on from the outside and it looks like a sort of flooring material that you might see on the inside of like a shop or a restaurant or however you want to classify this place. I'll leave all of that up to you. Bear in mind, it doesn't matter that much. It matters, but it's not like the most like important decision because we're going to be filling in a lot of the floor with stuff. You're not going to see a huge amount of the floor, whether it be carpet or seating or reception areas, like a lot of it's going to be covered up, so it's not a massive deal. Okay, so now that we've hit this point, ladies and gentlemen, we want to add the ceiling. The ceiling is made out of white concrete and sits directly above the windows which also means it sits directly above the entrance and conveniently, almost as if it was planned, covers up all of the imperfections in the ceiling. That's the real reason why the headspace is a little bit tight, but it also makes the interior cosy. It really actually does add quite a little bit of something to the interior to have it so cosy. You probably won't have seen the inside of the build by this point unless you've been very naughty and you've skipped a hen, but it is quite a cosy sort of lounging eating area. It's really quite nice. You'll see as we progress through the build what I'm talking about. But we're adding all of this white concrete in, and that is again because I like I like the insides of these builds to feel quite light, unless there's a reason not to make them that way. And what we're also going to do is add some ceiling lights into, well, the ceiling. These are going to be redstone lamps, and the positions of these are really like, it's, you can really just kind of put them wherever. So here's how I figured out where I want them. We have the entrance, right? We have this black concrete of the upper left of the entrance and this black concrete of the upper right of the entrance. So here and here. I would like these to be extended back and I would like lights in the ceiling where the birch planks are on the side of the build. I always find it best to make lights coincide with key structural points of the build like this. Because then, as you're looking into the ceiling, it's like, that, that, why are there lights there? Why does that make sense? And then it kind of does, uh-oh. And then it kind of does make sense because, like, you notice that it kind of just lines up. Like, even if you don't, like, actually, like, full-on, like, notice, be like, oh, that's where they go. Like, it, it kind of looks right as, uh, as you look around. And you will find that this is really quite adequate light. If you try and add ceiling lights in the form of redstone lamps that require an activation block further out underneath these parts, you won't be you won't have enough room. Like you'll have to just like how far do you have to go? Like here. Like it depends how far out you go. You could add another row if you wanted to, but this is quite enough really. 
So now that we've added that ladies and gentlemen, we are going to add a bit of detail to two corners of the build. I'm going to get rid of the lamp and the red uh, the redstone, and I'm going to grab black stained glass block. So there are three corners of Denny's that I want to extend the corner blocks inwards, right? So this sort of formation here. I want to take the front left corner, the back left corner, and the back right corner. And I want to place red concrete coming inwards to form the same sort of shape that we have outside. And I want to extend both of the red concretes in like this. Actually, that looks horrible. So what I think we'll do is we'll take the corner and extend it upwards. And then we'll add glass like this. So something like that doesn't look too bad, really. Yeah, that, that actually looks better than what we were about to do. So we're going to do the same thing with this corner. We're just going to kind of like turn it into like a square. We're going to extend the corners up and then glass on both of the sides like this. We'll do the same thing for this back right corner. We're going to place red concrete in the corners, extend the corner up with glass in between like this. And we do not do it to the front right side. This side is a no-no. But whilst we are talking about this side, there is a booth here. The booth requires red concrete. We're going to place a red concrete in the corner, extend it left to and right to like this. Place dark oak wood stairs around the inside like that. Once you've done that, we are going to place oak wood planks coming outwards from the corner here where we have the terracotta. We're going to place five oak planks coming out. One, two, three, four, five. Connect to the ceiling and fill the middle of this in using black stained glass paint. On the opposite side of this where we just were, in the corner we're going to have some chairs. So in this corner we're going to place ourselves a chair with a dark oak wood stair, leave a gap and place an opposite facing dark oak wood stair. Leaving a gap of one from the booth on this side as well. You actually want to leave a gap of, just a gap of one should do. We're going to place a, a chair, leave a gap, place a chair on the opposite side like this. What we are also going to do, now that we have done that, is we are going to make the counter. That requires red concrete. So the red concrete, actually it requires terracotta. It doesn't require red concrete at all, it uses terracotta. So we're going to place terracotta coming outwards from this terracotta here. So like on the side where you've got these two windows closest towards the back. Coming left of this terracotta, I want you to place 11 more terracotta. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Place one terracotta coming back, leave a gap, and then three connecting to the wall. Coming along the back wall, I want you to leave a gap of two and then place four red concrete, one, two, three, four, like this. Once we have done that, we are going to make more of the structure. So I want you to come towards this corner of Denny's. So like as you come through the entrance, it's just on the left hand side here. Leaving a gap of two, I want you to place a red concrete and then in front of it a dark oak wood stair, leave a gap, place an opposite stair, behind that place red concrete with a dark oak wood stair in front of it, leave a gap, place an opposite stair, then red concrete. Extend the red concretes across by two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and place dark oak wood stairs extending across as well, just like this. I then want you to place oak wood planks on the sides of all of this. So we're going to place oak wood planks on the side of this, like so. And the oak wood planks aren't going to extend or anything like that, they just want to box in these booths. We're going to use black stained glass pane to connect the red concrete upwards, like so. So it wants to actually connect to the ceiling. It should only require two rows. And you want to do this for 
all three of these booths. So here, and then we're going to place it here, and here as well. Coming along this wall, we want to have, I believe it's two tables, okay? So we want to have a dark oak wood stair here, pressed against this red concrete, the same on the opposite side. We're then going to leave a gap of two this time, and then place opposite facing dark oak wood stairs, like this. And then in the middle of these later, you might want to place a little bit of decoration or something, but... Ladies and gentlemen, I know that that was quite tedious, I know that was quite long, half of my head's missing, but that's a lot of work for the inside done. The next part of that will be decorating the inside itself, we'll be adding loads of like carpet and we'll be uh, adding like paintings and stuff and lightening the place up a bit. The last thing that I do want to do that's sort of kind of the inside is I just want to put doors on this, which I don't have on me for some weird reason, but we're going to be using dark oak wood doors and we're just going to place them right at the entrance like that. So. Well done, ladies and gentlemen, for making it this far. We've made a huge amount of Denny's. I'm very proud of you for everything that we've just done there. We are now going to make the sign, my least favourite part. The sign requires us to grab a crafting table, six yellow banners, red die, and yellow die. We begin, of course, by placing the crafting table on the ground, and we open it up. I would recommend moving stuff so that you can have all of your banner material somewhere in the top left hand corner area. Our first letter is of course D, so place a yellow banner in the centre of the table with red dye coming top to bottom of the right side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle right of the table with a yellow dye in the middle to the left of it. Grab the new banner and place it in the centre of the table with red dye coming along the bottom. Grab the new banner and place it in the centre of the table with red dye coming top to bottom of the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the centre of the table with red dye coming along the top. That is D. We're going to make E, which is a brand new yellow banner in the middle of the table and red dye coming up the left side top to bottom. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with red dye coming along the top. Grab the new banner and place it in the top middle of the table with red dye coming along the middle. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with red dye coming along the bottom. Grab the new banner and that is E. Let's make N. Brand new banner in the middle of the table with red dye coming top to bottom of the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with red dye coming top to bottom of the right side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle left of the table with red dye top left corner to bottom right. Grab the new banner and that is your N. You're actually going to need two N's so if you're not in creative mode make another one. Now we are going to make Y. Yellow banner in the middle left of the table with red dye top left corner to bottom right. Grab the new banner and place it in the top middle of the table with two rows of yellow underneath it. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle left of the table with red dye bottom left corner to top right. And that is your Y. Grab a brand new banner and place it in the middle of the table with red dye coming along the bottom. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with red dye coming along the top. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle left of the table. And finally for our final banner, S. So we need a brand new yellow banner in the middle of the table, red dye along the top. Grab that banner and place it in the middle of the table, red dye along the bottom. Grab that banner and place it in the middle left of the table and red dye top left corner to bottom right. And that, ladies and gentlemen, spells Denny's. 
We're missing an N, but we can double up on that one. I guess that's Denise. <laughs> so, we're going to place the Denise sign left to right on top of this thick middle bit of yellow concrete. So, D E N N Y S. There we go, Denise. That looks fantastic. So, just before we move on to the inside of Denny's, one last decision that you might want to make is you may want to add a couple of leaf areas outside of the front of your Denny's just to kind of break up these stone areas. It actually really looks quite nice and it does break up kind of like the grey of Denny's doing that. It, it does look quite nice that way. I'll leave that up to you though, feel free to add that or not. Now, once you have done that ladies and gentlemen, and you have actually completed the entire outside of the build, and some of the inside as well actually. So we're going to get rid of all of our materials, we're going to grab brand new ones, the materials that we are going to need for the inside are all of these materials that I'm now showing you on the screen, so please do make sure that you have access to all of those and enough of those materials as well. And once you do have them all, we can move to the inside. And I actually have to grab them for myself as well, so I'll be back in just a second. I'm back! I have just finished grabbing all of those materials that I showed you on the screen just before. If you haven't finished grabbing them, please pause the video until you have every single one of them. And once you do have them all just like I do, we can begin. So, the first thing that we have to do, of course, is come inside of our building. Looking pretty good already. The first thing that I want to do actually inside of the building, however, is I want to add some seats to the bar, it's not really a bar, kind of like to the cashier slash ordering area. It's not really a bar, but it does have some bar stalls. So starting from the front left corner here, I want to place on every other block an oak fence just to make some stalls. I'm going to place red carpet on top of these and you can alternate with yellow carpet if you like. Additionally, I'm going to place a couple of cash registers, so where people can pay, and you guys know how cash registers work. I'm gonna place one here, and maybe even like one here at the end or something like that, or maybe even one in between these seats. Along this back wall, I want to slot two sets of furnaces in between the red concretes. And I'm going to place stone brick stairs which look like extractor fans above the furnaces. I also want to perhaps, maybe I might even chuck a sea lantern on, like, on the corner here just to add a little bit of brightness. Additionally, I'm going to add in between where we have all of the tables, I'm going to place oak fence in between all of the dark oak wood stairs that we have dotted around the place. And once I've placed all of these, because of course this is going to be the table portion, so in between absolutely everywhere, I'm then going to add red carpets and yellow carpets and red carpet, yellow carpet, kind of like a tongue twister, going all the way in between all of the seating. So again, you can use whatever colors you like. For these booth areas, I kind of like the idea of using yellow. And uh, on the outskirts, I might stick to using red. You could even use red and yellow to alternate. I quite like that. I'm going to also add some lanterns hanging above the tables. This makes sense above the center of the actual table because you've got a row of three, place a lantern hanging from the ceiling above the middle, like this. So here and here, you might even want to, can't really do it here that well, um, on the opposite side as well here, so maybe like just above where this table is, maybe just here. You probably don't need another one because it's quite well lit up already. If you want, you can of course add torches around the area as well, so like if you wanted to like here and back here aren't bad choices because it is quite dark around the kitchen area. Additionally, I'm just going to add a single row of oak wood slabs where the booth areas are, just to make them look a little bit private. So like you can see from the outside now, that just looks a little bit more private, doesn't it? Like makes it look a little bit more interesting. I like the idea that there might be a slight waiting area in Denny's. So I'm actually gonna place dark oak fence, 
Coming outwards from the first booth that you see as you walk through the door, I'm going to place two dark oak fence here and here. And I'm going to grab all of the remaining materials. Uh, brewing stands, flower pots, item frames, chests, spruce trap doors, paintings, yellow glazed terracotta, oak, leaves, and a lectern. And we're going to place a lectern just on this left side. So that's kind of like if, if somebody's like booked or just to keep track of like how many seats there are and stuff. That's what the lectern is for. Um, we're using some yellow glazed terracotta to kind of like add a little bit of color and life to the place. You can add uh, like a plant here in this corner maybe. You can do a similar thing in between the two chairs that you have on this side. I was kind of thinking maybe just a little bit of glazed terracotta there too. Um, you can add paintings wherever you sort of feel necessary. So like if say you wanted to have a couple of paintings here on this side like here and here then you could obviously feel free to um, You might even want to have like a painting on this back wall here I like the idea of having a collage painting now What does that mean you might be wondering well? I like the idea of having a double painting here or maybe just like here and then underneath it to the left I like the idea of having another double paint Not not the same one not 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 that one either Something like that, right? So, like, right in the middle. So, you're two rows away from the right. You're two rows away to the left. I like the idea of having a sort of, like, a similar collage painting. It's, it's just kind of, like, a little interesting feature. I'm going to place a couple of chests back here. Maybe, like, one here. And maybe, like, one here against this back wall. Just because it seems to make sense to have chests around. Uh, I'm going to place some item frames above here in between the two extractor fans. And below, I'm going to have, like flower parts and brewing stands of course for drinks um, inside those item frames you can kind of just place whatever you might even want to have like a double chest in front here too I'm gonna have a spruce trap door so that the kitchen area or you know I guess it is kind of like a kitchen slash worker area is kind of like sectioned off a little bit um, I'm also going to add some colorful carpet as well a little bit around let me see i mean there's mainly one place that i kind of want it which is just the entrance i like the idea of having like a red carpet or maybe like a yellow carpet or a red and yellow carpet leading from the entrance towards where you would order so from like here to say there is good you could even have it bend around the corner but i think that that's actually just about fine and of course there's always plenty more opportunity to add more tortures not there to add more torches about the place like wherever you see fit but it's a really cozy sort of environment around here isn't it like it's it's a really really cozy interior i really really like it i, I love this it's one of my favorite ones actually just got, it's just got such a nice feel i i don't know what it's about it might just be the booths and the, the low ceiling and when it comes to filling in those item frames at the back, I mean, here's, here's some suggestions for you. So I'm not 100% sure what Denny's does. We've only actually got, we've actually got a couple of them in England, believe it or not. But like bread isn't a bad idea. And where is it? Eggs aren't a bad idea to maybe chuck in there as well. I think the eggs are over here. Yeah. And maybe like a couple of meats as well, just to chuck in the item frames at the back. Isn't a bad idea. Maybe like chicken and pork chops so maybe like here 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 and here you know fill them in with whatever you like really i'm not going to th those are some suggestions but feel free to kind of add in there whatever you want and ladies and gentlemen that's that's kind of it i mean the, the one other thing that you might want to do this is what i usually do with floors but i, I kind of decided against it this time you might want to re-floor the kitchen area so you might want to make the floor like i really like iron blocks for the floor in kitchens and stuff because it just seems so sanitary it seems like what you would have for a floor for a kitchen like you probably wouldn't you wouldn't want carpet for a kitchen you know so something like that something easy to wipe up and it, it just does kind of like separate it from the rest of the build a little bit if you do that i'll have that in the item list just in case you guys do indeed want to do it but, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's that's the entire build made. That's that's the inside done. Very well done for making it this far. Let's let's have a look at this place. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what your Denny's will look like once it has been 100% fully completed. 
We have a few parking spots outside. We have some nice nature out the front. The sides of the building are nice and decorated with Denny's colors. We have detail in the overhangs and the roof is nicely slotted together. We have good branding on the front. I don't think you can mistake what this building is. And on the inside, if we go through these double doors, we have three booths to the left of us. We have a waiting area with a lectern. We have a place to sit at the front where you can watch your food being cooked. We have a kitchen area with, that has food and also drinks. We have a nice little tucked away seating area just right of the entrance as well. And not only that, we also do have a couple of tables just out here on the left, which are quite nice and cozy as well. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please do remember to hit that like button, as it really helps me and the channel out very, very, very much. If you would love to see all of the other builds I'm going to be making in the future, please subscribe and click the little bell. That'll ensure that you get all my awesome city builds sent directly to your sub box. And if you do want to see a specific city build, then of course you know what to do. Leave a comment, leave a suggestion, why not, what could it hurt? And if you do leave a suggestion, and I do make your suggestion, you may see yourself at the start of the video, which is kind of cool. Or at least I think it is. Maybe you don't, who knows. And, last but not least, if you are making a city and you don't know what to build, I have a few suggestions for you. We have so many builds now on the channel, all sorts of city builds that I think that you guys would love to make. Check them all out in the card system description below, and I'll even leave a link to the playlist at the top of the comment section. We have made so many of these guys, so many city builds ranging from restaurants, to butchers, to bakeries, to ice cream parlors, game shops, skyscrapers, parks, Denny's. We have so many different builds on the channel, ladies and gentlemen. We don't just build one thing. Check out the playlist card system, description below, and at the top of the comment section too. You really can't go wrong with the City Builds playlist. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I think I'm going to jump off the top of Denny's to say thank you for watching this video. It doesn't make any sense, but I'm doing it anyway. Goodbye! Middle left of the table with red dye, bottom left corner, to top right. I got rid of all my banners! No! Oh no. That is so sad. I accidentally deleted all of my banners. Ah. Oh.